Hello and welcome to Alexpo and with just days to spare I am finally predicting my England squad for the Euros that are for some reason a year late. Well not for some reason, we know exactly why it's happened a year late. Anyway, I know everyone else did the predictions months ago when Gareth Southgate could only pick a 23 man squad. Now he's got 26 players to pick and I'm going to have, well I'm going to predict them. It's a bit of prediction, a little bit who I would rather take. But let's do it. This is my 26 man squad for Euro 2020 slash Euro 2021. Obviously you'll notice there's no football manager theme with this video. From now on I'm going to start doing maybe one a video a week, maybe once every two weeks. Just a video, we'll just talk about football. If you've got any ideas, if this is something you want to see, if someone you don't want to see, let me know in the comments below what you think. And I thought there was something outside, it's just the sky. Anyway, anyway as I was saying, if you want to see more non-football manager videos, let me know in the comments below. I mean, I'm happy to talk about football any day of the week. I mean, we, we do it every day of the week, except for Mondays and Fridays. Anyway, let's crack on. I've got my trusty notepad with me, 26-man squad and a few notes out of interest. I imagine Gareth Southgate's got a similar setup when he's announcing his squad on... Is it Tuesday he's announcing the squad? It doesn't matter. Right, goalkeepers, I think it's fairly obvious. Jordan Pickford, Nick Pope and Dean Henderson. Really... Who else could it be? I mean, they're not going to take Ben Foster just for the banter. Joe Hart's more interested in advertising shampoo and doing punditry on Man City. Who else? Aaron Ramsdale, no good for me. Carl Darlow doesn't play. Sam Johnson, I mean, I know he did well in a relegated West Brom team, but if you're being peppered with that many shots, odds on are you're going to save a canny few of them. And that's exactly what Sam Johnson did. I mean, well done to him for getting the England squad not too long ago, but for the Euros, it's got to be Pickford, it's got to be Pope, and it's got to be Henderson. And then for me, it's in that order. Pickford, I know he's had his critics, he's had his doubters, but he's still got to be the England number one. Technically, out of the three, Pope's probably the best goalkeeper in terms of saves, position and whatnot. But Southgate wants more than that. Southgate wants someone who can play out from the back. And that's exactly what you get from Pickford. He did it perfectly at the 2018 World Cup. I mean, if you think back to that summer three years ago in Russia, Pickford was unbelievable. And since then, he, he just hasn't really hit the heights. Fortunately, he's had a little bit of a resurgence in recent weeks. But in a season where the number one spot was totally up for grabs, I don't think Pope's taken the opportunity. I don't think he's been exceptionally good. And Dean Henderson, yeah, he's starting to play a lot more, but hasn't played enough to justify being the England number one. Maybe he's come the World Cup in Qatar, Henderson might be number one if Pickford hasn't booked his ideas up. But for now, Jordan Pickford has got to be the England number one. Right, moving on to the defence, I've picked nine different defensive players. We'll start with the left-backs because, again, it's fairly obvious. It's Ben Chilwell and it's Luke Shaw. The only issue is, who do you start out with the two of them? I mean, if you'd asked us 12 months ago, I'd have said Ben Chilwell, absolutely. I love Ben Chilwell. He's been, I think he's had a brilliant season, to be honest with you, for Chelsea. But the emergence of Luke Shaw has been an absolute sight to behold. And between the two of them, I'd say Luke Shaw's probably been a little bit better defensively. I mean, yeah, I know in the modern day, fullbacks all they're expected to do is attack. But they have got to defend as well. I mean, you know, keep it under your hats. But I mean, out of the two of them, I'd probably say Luke Shaw's been the best. He's probably had the better season out of the two. He's been one of the best players in the Premier League. Probably the best left back in the Premier League this season. Yeah, I mean, Jao Cancelo's played over there a lot, but he is technically a right back. Andy Robertson's been still pretty good, but I mean, yeah, that, yeah, I'll put me, I'll put my neck on the line and say Luke Shaw has been the best Premier League left back this season. Is that that's not really outlandish, is it? I mean, we're not going to get mad clicks for saying Luke Shaw is really good at being a left back. I mean, Jose Mourinho might be quite angry about that, but whatever, he's gone to Rome. Offensively, I think Chilwell and Luke Shaw are both as good as each other. They both got five assists in the Premier League this season. It's a no-brainer. It's got to be those two. It's at right back where the big issues are. I mean, for me, it's obvious who you take, but I mean, it doesn't seem quite as obvious to Gareth Southgate. If you're going to take one right back to the Euros, it has to be Trent Alexander-Arnold. How can there be a debate about him not going? I mean, I understood when he was dropped the last time. He hadn't been playing too well for Liverpool, but since then, he's probably been Liverpool's best player, not called Mo Salah. He's been absolutely sensational. I'm sure it was against Man United the other week. There was a stat that came on the... There was four stats that they put on the screen, and Trent Alexander-Arnold was top for every single one of them. In the Premier League, only Kevin De Bruyne and Bruno Fernandes have created more big chances than Trent Alexander-Arnold. I just think with his set-piece ability, the way he can rampage forward, his crosses into the box... It's got to be, it's got to be Trent Alexander-Arnold. He's got to be the first choice right back. 
Yes, he's had his problems defensively, but you've also got to bear in mind, he's been playing in a back four that's been changing more than the weather. I mean, he's had different... Normally, he's got... Is it Gomez normally? Gomez normally plays as the right centre-back or Joel Matip. Two, I mean, I know Gomez is young, but they're both experienced centre-backs playing alongside him. This season, he's had Henderson, Fabinho, Nat Phillips, Reese Williams, Kabak, so many different partners. It's, it's just been changing all season for him. But for me, Trent Alexander-Arnold's got to go and he's got to be joined by Reese James, especially if Gareth Southgate decides to go with a 3-4-3 formation because Rhys James, he's shown this season that he can thrive as a wing-back. Same with Chilwell on the other side. If we go 3-4-3, I think you've got to start James and Chilwell just because they're suited to the wing-back system. They've played with it with Chelsea. They know how it works. Rhys James, you know, he's, he's slightly different to Trent, but they're both great offensively. The big issue is, who out of the experienced players do you take? Do you take Kyle Walker or Kieran Trippier? I think... Well, to be honest, I think Kieran Trippier will go anyway. Personally, I wouldn't take Kieran Trippier. Yes, I know he's on the brink of the title with Atletico Madrid. But really, if he hadn't scored that free kick against Croatia, would we still be talking about Kieran Trippier? Let's be honest, he's all right. I, th I mean, I'm not a fan of Kyle Walker, but I think he's got to go. He's experienced, his pace, really impressive. And you've got the option, if Southgate goes to a three at the back, as we've said, he can play as that right centre-back, like he did at the World Cup. I mean, I don't want him to play there, he's, he's barely a right-back, never mind a centre-back. But if you, I mean, the addition of having three extra players, having a 26-man squad, Southgate, I think, will take three right-backs. Trent has to go, doesn't look like he will. Rhys James nailed on, surely. Kyle Walker's definitely going to go. Kieran Trippi is the one who shouldn't go. But I really think he will. But no, I'm predicting so far for defenders we've got Ben Chilwell, Luke Shaw, Trent Alexander Arnold, Reese James, and Kyle Walker. And we move on to the centre backs. And my word, our centre back options are absolutely crap. This is a golden generation of English players, but it's centre back. I mean, it's absolute slim pickings. I mean, let's bear in mind the fact that Joe Gomez is injured. If Joe Gomez was fit, he'd probably start. Prob yeah, he probably would start. The two guaranteed picks for England, providing Harry Maguire's past fit after he's he got an ankle problem or something he got the other week. Providing he's fit, Harry Maguire definitely on the plane. I suppose it's not a plane, is it, if we're playing at Wembley? Yeah, on the bus. He's in the team. Harry Maguire got to be there. Great at the World Cup. Man United. He's doing all right. He's the captain, I guess. Him and John Stones. John Stones had an absolute resurgence this season. It looked like... I mean, when City started the season with Imeric Laporte and Ruben Diaz, I never would have thought John Stones would have got back in this team. But he got back in the team and he's been excellent. He's got to start for England. It's got to be Stones and it's got to be Maguire. I mean, surely we're going to play a back four. We're kind of go to a major tournament with such crap centre-backs and play three of them. The other two options are the issue. I think you'll go Tyrone Mings. I'm not a massive fan of Tyrone Mings. I mean, out of the two Villa defenders, I think Conser's better. But I think you'll go with Tyrone Mings. He's left-footed again. Left-footed centre-backs are like goldust at the minute. And again, it gives you the option to play three at the back. You can play a left-sided centre-back, which is why left-footed centre-backs are so in such high demand nowadays. I think you'll go with Mings. Again, he's a good leader. It's what you want. And the other one, I'd personally go for Connor Cody. He can play out from the back. He's suited to a back three. He can play in a four. Not quite as well. And just like Tyro Mings, he's vocal, he's a leader. I think he seems to be well-liked in the England squad since he's been involved in this past year. And compared to the other options, I mean, Michael Keane, Michael Keane might get in. I don't think he will, but he'll become close. Eric Dyer, man, he can't go. Eric Dyer's career has been quite sad. He's almost had the Phil Jones problem of being too versatile. He started at right back, then he was at centre back, then he's been centre midfield. Then Jose Mourinho put him back in at centre-back and it didn't really work. And to be honest with you, if we're going to the Euros with Eric Dyer, I mean, if you compare that to the French, Americ Laporte is so good, yet he he's so good and he can't get in the France squad and now he's playing for Spain. Yet we're debating whether to take Eric bloody Dyer. I mean, here's an option for you. For Kyle Tomori. Any Serie A fans? How's he been doing at AC Milan? I mean, I'll be honest with you, I don't really watch Italian football other than I watched AC in the Europa League when they played Man United this week, but I, the other week, sorry. But I can't really remember, was Tomori any good? How's he getting on? Because 
he should surely be an option. I like him at Chelsea, but I mean, I don't think he'll go. I think the four centre-backs, I think he'll go with John Stones, definitely, Harry Maguire, definitely, Connor Cody and Tyro Mings. Then you've got also got the option, Kyle Walker can play centre-back if you go into a three. And there's another couple of players in the midfield who can also drop in. So you've got options there. But the big worry for England for me, I mean, we've got all the attack and talent in the world. It's going to be hard to get all those players into the same team. But it's centre-back, man. The options are not good. We need John Stones and Harry Maguire to stay fit. And even then, we need both of them on the absolute top of their game. Because we know they're both capable of errors. I mean, John Stones, before this season, was a bit of a laughingstock he was turning into. Not quite Phil Jones levels of laughingstocks, but still. I've only gone and got pen on me pants. Oh, what have I done? Oh, idiot. Right, so that's 12 players down and we're moving into midfield. Midfield for me, pretty easy. The only big question mark is next to Jordan Henderson's name. Is he going to be fit? He hasn't played since the 20th of February when Liverpool were beaten in the Merseyside derby by Everton. But even if Jordan Henderson's only 80% fit by the time the squad's announced, I think we've got to take him because... That midfield area is pretty imbalanced if he doesn't go. We've got a mix of players who are very attacking and very defensive, whereas Jordan Henderson's a little bit of a blend of both. He's got that engine. He's, uh, he's a leader. I mean, he's probably the best captain in the Premier League. And he's got international experience. I thought he was great at the World Cup. I know he missed that penalty against Colombia, but that, it didn't matter in the end of the day because Jordan Pickford bailed him out. We've just got, I mean, personally, if Jordan Henderson's fit, he's got to start. I'm really worried that he's not going to be fit. Surely, I mean, he's been putting videos on Twitter. He looks, he looks like he's doing all right. But I mean, there's a difference between working in a gym and being match fit, ready for a European Championship against some of the best players in the continent. But if he's fit, John Henderson's got to go, and he's got to start. But who? I mean, the other defensive players in midfield. First one, I'm going to say Declan Rice. Luckily, he's come back from injury as well, because at a time it looked like our midfield options were pretty threadbare. Declan Rice back. He's, I think, if he's yeah, I'd start Declan Rice, just sitting in front of the defence, holding midfielder. At West Ham, he's had a brilliant season. I mean, it looks like it's going to end in disappointment. There's not going to be any Champions League football coming to the London Stadium. But still, a very good season from West Ham. Declan Rice, one of the focal points of that team that isn't called Mikel Antonio. Rice, got to be in the squad, got to start. And you've also got that luxury, if needs be, he can drop into centre-back. He doesn't really do it much for West Ham. I'm surprised at how much he plays centre-mid. I thought... When he was emerging on the scene, he would have transformed into more of a centre-back. But it's actually centre midfield where he's shown his best football. Yeah, and I, and, I, and I think Declan Rice will start. I mean, how good is Declan Rice really? He, he's just alright. I think he's a little bit overhyped for, for what he is. But unfortunately, when you consider the other options, I think he's got to start. Other defensive player who I would take is Calvin Phillips. I really like Calvin Phillips. He'll be the backup to Rice the backup option to play in that holding role. I mean, Henderson can play in that holding role, but he's better suited to being, I don't know if it's the eight or the six, I don't really know how it works, on the right of the hold midfielder. He's not really suited to being at the base of the midfield. You've seen at Liverpool, Fabinho is the best hold midfielder. When Henderson plays there, they're not quite as good. Anyway, back to Callum Phillips, rather. I think Callum Phillips, for Leeds, absolutely exceptional. As I say, he can drop into centre-back as well. But his progressive passing is brilliant. He's always looking to play the ball forward. We know he's got the energy levels with how he's played for Marcelo Bielsa's side. But yeah, I mean, I, I don't think Phillips should start. If we were to start with a midfield three of Phillips, Henderson and Rice, that would be very negative. But I, I think Phillips is a good option. I mean, you've also got the option that if Henderson was injured, you could go very defensive and go for two whole midfielders in Phillips and Rice. That would be pretty negative. Twitter would go absolutely wild at that. Can't really see it happen, but it is an option. My fourth natural centre midfielder, Jude Bellingham. I don't care how young he is, if you're good enough, you're ready. Jude Bellingham has to go. We saw in the Champions League quarterfinals against Man City how good this kid is. Everyone laughed when Birmingham retired the number 22. They should be building a bloody statue of him. He's that good. That's what they'll be doing when he wins us the Euros this summer. Jude Bellingham has to be in the squad. Next up, Mason Mount. You cannot not pick Mason Mount. I never quite got the narrative that Mason Mount was just a teacher's pet that Frank Lampard and Gareth Southgate loved. He's a fantastic player. In terms of attacking midfielders, what more can you want? He's a good passer, 
He's going to arrive late in the box. He scores goals. He scores important goals. Mason Mount, he's done it in England shirt before. And I, th I think with the other players in the squad, I think Mason Mount will be a starter. I, I think if we're going for it in games, he will be the attacking option of a midfield three alongside Henderson and Declan Rice. But yeah, I mean, Mason Mount nailed on. The debate of Mason Mount, Grealish and Foden, I mean, I, I genuinely don't know who I would pick. I do, I would pick Phil Foden. But out of the three of them, Mason Mount definitely has to start. Jack Grealish, he will be in the squad. I mean, if you think back to 12 months ago, the debate was, will Jack Grealish ever get a chance in England? Now it's a debate of where do you fit him in at the starting eleven? And the worry is, I don't actually see where he fits in. I mean, an incredible, an incredible player. I, I didn't really like him a few years ago. I just thought he was a bit... Or is it all fair no niggas? Is that the saying? A bit flash, but wasn't really doing anything. Since coming back into the Premier League, he's proven me, and probably a lot of people, very, very wrong. He scores goals, gets assists, and he plays with such a confidence, and he backs it up. Honestly, it... it it's like watching Gaza at times. Not that I watched Gaza much because I was a child. But just the arrogance and the desire to make things happen. The close control is amazing. I mean, him and Foden, similar in ways. But I, I think out of the two of them, Grealish is the one that's going to... Grealish isn't going to start, I don't think. But an amazing option to have coming off the bench. He can play centrally or he can play off one of the flanks. Ideally, normally the left flank. Which I think is where Phil Foden will play. Phil Foden, I've got him down here as one of my midfielders. In fact, he's the last midfielder I've got named. But I think Phil Foden will start in a front three. I mean, what a season he's had. In all competitions at the time of recording, he's scored 15 goals and he's provided 10 assists. I mean, his most recent goal against Brighton was an absolute thing of beauty. His finishing ability is just so calm in front of goal. I mean, I know he missed a couple of sitters in the Champions League semis, but we'll let him off for that. But the way he just always seems to caress it into the corner, even from chances when he's hitting away from goal, if you know what I mean. He still manages to find a gap between the keeper and the post. It's, it's absolutely astounding. And the way he's been playing, he's the most naturally gifted player England have got right now. And he's got to start. I think he'll start on that left wing. But either way, he's got to start. So midfield, we've got Declan Rice, Jordan Henderson, Calvin Phillips, Jude Bellingham, Mason Mount, Jack Grealish and Phil Foden. James Madison, yeah, great player, but I think he's one of those players that just isn't going to get a chance at it at national level, unfortunately. I'm sorry, James, it's just that it sounds like I'm apologising myself. Sorry, James Madison, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. I mean, he did have a, a purple patch earlier in the season, but forms fell off. I mean, there's, just, there's no way he's going to get in. I, I can't see it happening at all. Right, we've got seven places left in Gareth Southgate's squad and I'm moving on to the forwards. And the first name, it's obviously the captain, Harry Kane. Best player in the Premier League this season. Top of the goal scoring charts, top of the assist charts. I mean, for an attacking player, what more can you want? We relied on him heavily at the 2018 World Cup when he won the Golden Boot, although he did score a lot of penalties. And he's got so much better in these past three years. He's not just a goal scorer, he's creating as well. He's no longer that selfish player he was once dubbed as. Yeah, he'll still take a shot from 25 yards out, but more often than not, he's hitting the target. Harry Kane, obviously, he's the captain. He's going to start. He's the main striker. I mean, imagine having to be back up to Harry Kane, knowing fine well. You're probably not going to get any minutes. But we'll go straight into the backups of Harry Kane rather than looking at wingers first. We'll go at the backups. I think he'll go Dominic Calvert-Lewin. I would, I would take Dominic Calvert-Lewin, although he hasn't been too good since the turn of the year. I mean, he had an amazing start of the season when he was getting in the England squad and he was playing well. But in the past three or four months, he's dipped off. He's still got 14 goals, I believe, in the Premier League. I'll just quickly check my notes. Sorry, he's got 16 at the time of recording. Exactly the same as Patrick Bamford. Ollie Watkins has got, I'm going to have to look at my notes again. Ollie Watkins has got 13. Three great options for England. Ollie Watkins, I know he scored in his debut a month or so, it was a goal. Patrick Bamford, no international experience, although he's had an amazing season for Leeds. I just think because of that international experience, that's going to give Dominic Calvert-Lewin the edge. But the thing is, I, I still think you know, with the additional three players in the squad, I think Southgate will take another out-and-out -out striker. And if I'd take Mason Greenwood, he's... 
been in wonderful form in recent... Sorry, I thought I had the wrong thing on my screen. He's been in wonderful form in recent weeks. In terms of natural finishing ability, there aren't many better in the country than Mason Greenwood. He just always seems to find a corner. He's absolutely lethal in front of goal. And he's still so young. In the years to come, he's going to be an absolutely unbelievable player. Right now, I would take him to the Euros. He'll get a bit of experience under his belt. And he's a great option to come off the bench if we need to try and nick a goal. That might be harsh on the likes of Watkins and Bamford, who've, had, who've been great all season. But I just think with the form Greenwood's in, the potential he's got to grow into this England team, I think Southgate's got to take him. Right, we're going to move on to the wingers now. I, I, know, I know I've already said that Phil Foden, I would have him playing on the wing, but he is technically a midfielder. He could play in a centre midfield role. I can't see it happening. But as out of wingers, Raheem Sterling hasn't had his best season in a Man City shirt. Often find himself out of the starting eleven, but he's still so talented. You couldn't not take Raheem Sterling. He can play on the left. He can play on the right. Ideally, he wants to play on the left, but I, I think with the way Phil Foden's playing. That's not going to happen for Sterling, but got to be in the squad. Experienced, also a leader as well. He's got tournament experience. I mean, will this be his third or fourth major tournament? Went to Euro 2016, went to 2018. Did he go to 2014 World Cup? Ah, he did, didn't he? I'm sure he did. I'm, I'm pretty sure he did. Never quite done it at a major tournament, Raheem Sterling. And I do wonder if he'll actually get the chance to at the Euros. Next wide option I'm going for, Marcus Rashford. The thing that surprises me about Marcus Rashford is, is that he actually wants to play out wide. When he was breaking into the Man United team, I always thought, well, he's being wasted on the wing. Why are we not getting him through the middle? But apparently he wants to play on the left wing. The problem is for Marcus Rashford is that's quite a stocked area of the pitch. I mean, for me, he'd be third choice behind Foden and then Sterling. I mean, even Grealish. But I suppose the beauty of having Rashford is you could play him on the right. I mean, he's not as suited over there. But you can also play him through the middle. He gives Southgate that extra option. A little bit of versatility, a bit of room to wiggle with if we're chasing a game. But the winger for me, who's guaranteed to start, I mean, I can't believe there was debates about whether he should be in the squad, is Jaden Sancho. It just shows the, like, the ridiculousness of the British media that they thought maybe Jaden Sancho shouldn't be in this England squad. I'm going to read off a stat for you on Jaden Sancho this season. For Borussia Dortmund, at the time of recording, he scored 16 goals and provided 21 assists in all competitions. Those are ridiculous numbers for Jadon Sancho. And that's what Andy wants to play on the right. The problem we've got is we've got so many players wanting to play on the opposite side. I mean, Foden can play on the right. Normally plays on the left. Rashford wants to play on the left. Sterling wants to play on the left. Jadon Sancho has to be in this squad. And for me... He has to start. On that right wing, he's our absolute, he's almost a wild card option because as England fans, we haven't seen a lot of him in a three lines shirt. He only really broke into the team in the aftermath of the 2018 World Cup, totally torn Europe apart, playing for Borussia Dortmund. I can't wait for him to eventually come to the Premier League. Surely it's going to happen. I thought it was going to happen last season, but never did. That Man United saga was a bit of a head, I was going to say, I was going to say a rude word there. Either way, he didn't go to Man United. Hopefully this summer we'll see a transfer. Will it happen? Mm, yeah, I think it will. I think there's some... No, do I? It doesn't matter. This is about the England squad. So, so far for attackers, we've got Harry Kane, Calvert-Lewin, Mason Greenwood, Sterling, Marcus Rashford, and Jadon Sancho, which means I've got one place left. A 26th man in this squad. This was the one that actually caused us a lot of headaches because, I mean, if you've picked 25 players, you're guaranteed to have picked your best options he's not going to take another goalkeeper i don't really say why would you take four goalkeepers to a tournament defensively i mean he could take another center back but i mean if he does take an extra center back that says a lot about how negatively we're going to play and when you look at the midfield options i don't really see any match winners that you could take i mean you could take james ward prowse he's had a good season to southampton i really like him i'd love him if you played for south if i was a southampton fan he's one of those players you can just tell the fans just resonate with him so well but i, I don't think there's a wild card pick almost he's worth taking because you want someone who can affect a game realistically the only way james ward prowse is going to play if it's like a random group game where there's nothing on the line strikers I think we've got, an, if we're only going to play one up front, we've got enough with Kane, Calvert-Lewin, Greenwood and the option of playing Rashford through the middle. There's enough there. 
it's the right wing area where I think we're slightly lacking. Yeah, you can play Sterling over there, but not quite as comfortable. Sancho, for me, is going to be the main man over there. I think if, if Harvey Barnes had been fit, he would definitely have been... He probably would have been my pick. I mean, I know he plays on the left, so that's just ignoring everything I've just said. I would have took Harvey Barnes if he'd been fit. Unfortunately, he's not. So the man I would take is Bukayo Saka. I really like Bukayo Saka. I mean, when he was first coming into Arsenal, he just looked like he was a dribbler. But now he's starting to add end product to his game. And now he's playing on the right wing, which is apparently his favourite position. He'd be a great backup option for Sancho. He can play on the opposite flank as well. We've seen him play on the left. And you've even got the option, if needs be, play him as a left back, play him as a left wing back. Saka is attacking and he's versatile. I don't think there's any joy in taking another centre back or another centre midfielder because I, I don't think the options are good enough. England's strength is in their attack going into this tournament. And we need to take as many attacking players as possible, you know, just in case of injury. I think when you compare Saka to the other attacking players in this squad, I don't think he's quite as good yet. But he's good enough to be, have a place on the plane. And that's exactly why I'm picking Bakayo Saka as my 26th and final member of my England squad. Will he make it though? I'm not quite sure. Although he does have international experience. I don't know why I keep looking out the window. There is literally no one there. Will Saka go? I mean, he, when he was playing for England, he was playing as sort of a wing back, I think. But he did quite well. Yeah, I, I think I'm going to go with it. So that is my 26-man England squad. And just as a cheeky little bonus, I'd give you my start in 11, providing all these players are fit for the first game. Jordan Pickford in goal, Trent Alexander-Arnold right back, Luke Shaw left back, John Stones, Harry Maguire centre back, Holden midfield, Declan Rice in front of him, Jordan Henderson and Mason Mount. On the right, Jaden Sancho, on the left, Phil Foden, and up front, the captain, the main man, Harry Kane. Football is coming home this summer, lads. England are going to win the Euros. We're not going to win the Euros, but it's nice to get excited over nothing. We've had nothing to get excited about. We've been stuck in the house for nearly a year. If you're going to be annoyed at people saying it's coming home, I'm sorry, football isn't for you. Get yourselves back in another lockdown. I'm really excited for the Euros. I've become a little bit bored of Premier League football lately. I think it's become a little bit tiresome. Not a lot to play for. No fans. But I am well up for the Euros. This is an exciting England squad. And I just hope they can deliver. I mean, they're not going to win it. But someone's got to. You've got to be in it to win it. And that's exactly what England are. That is my 26-man squad. We'll see you Southgate picks in the coming days. I mean, hopefully it's, it's quite similar to that. I think there'll be a couple of changes. But I mean, there's quite a few players who are absolutely nailed on to go. I've had the luxury of picking this squad just days before it's announced. The people who picked it three months ago must be thinking, why on earth... Has he not? I can't even think of someone who wouldn't. I wouldn't have picked three months ago. Oxley Chamberlain. Why would I think Oxley Chamberlain? Falling off a cliff lately, hasn't he? But he's having a baby, so that's nice. He's probably not too concerned about the Euros. Anyway, that is my 26 man England squad after rambling about Alex Oxley Chamberlain's baby. Let me know your squad down in the comments below. If you've enjoyed this video, if you want to see more non football manager content, let me know in the comments below. It's the only way I'm going to know if you like it. But as always, don't forget to like, share and subscribe to Alexpo. And until next time, we will see you around.